What's going on everybody? This is DK Dynamite and tonight we're gonna be talking about season one reloaded for Call of Duty Vanguard, what to expect, and why the community probably won't be happy anyway. Definitely stay tuned. But before we jump into that, be sure to hit that subscribe button down below. And as you guys probably saw, if you have Twitter, Sledgehammer Games did break their silence. The break is finally over, their extended holiday break, I should say, where they went ahead and said they are back in the offices and more changes are on the way that everybody's waiting for. So we have changes to help with the completion of the Panzerfaust challenges, the rocket launcher perk adjustments to help counter all things fire and yes that's definitely needed multiplayer is almost unplayable right now because of that weapon balancing pass sniper buffs and shotgun nerfs a tweak to mortar barrage to reduce duration and they also went ahead and tweeted below this thank you for your patience while we are working behind the scenes you can expect more frequent updates now that we're back with more to come later this week but i also forgot that Treyarch is handling the competitive side of vanguard multiplayer this year which to me is i guess good news if you're just a fan of competitive black ops multiplayer players i think a lot of pros right now who aren't happy did mention that they liked cold war competitive even black ops 4 going back to black ops 3 people typically like the competitive side of Treyarch multiplayers but haven't been too on board with mw 2019 even vanguard so this is good news and i think uh, a lot of gaming scoopers did confirm with evidence on twitter that i can't show you on screen that league plays should be releasing with season 2 now the battle pass currently says 28 days to go for season 1 that leaves us with February 1st for the launch of the next season unless there is a delay of course but yeah I'm happy that Treyarch is involved with Vanguard I know things haven't been great with zombies but it isn't you know the A team over at Treyarch that's working on Vanguard zombies it's kind of like a B team or a C team that worked primarily on multiplayer in previous Treyarch titles I just hope the Treyarch's involvement with Vanguard doesn't affect their work on COD 2023 their next title which we talked a lot about in yesterday's video thank you all for the support on that one we talked about all the current rumors supposed early images and even more about the direction even story-wise with their next black ops installment but what's also really weird about the festive fervor event is that apparently as you guys can see in game with the timer there's supposed to be around what is this maybe 14 hours left to go for the event but then on sledgehammer's trello board it says that it's actually ending on january 5th at 10 a.m so we're like okay maybe this event does end tomorrow and everybody's favorite krampus ai bot does go away maybe that is correct but the trello board says otherwise we're not sure which one is actually correct day 20 of whatever this event they had planned for warzone is supposed to begin tomorrow and is being called fruitcake and that 20 day event they had for warzone was just a bit tone deaf it was a weird 20 day or so event that wasn't really marketed too much they just put out a tweet every single day with what was being changed in warzone and it was silly things like you know melee attacks do more damage you spawn in with the uav or spawn in with the gas mask or this or that just these silly little updates which i guess was supposed to improve replayability with this festive fervor event but nobody really cared or liked it too much so i was just like okay that's kind of like just not something anybody needs right now when the game has so many other issues but it was just extra content i guess you could say and that supposedly doesn't end until january 5th so we'll have to wait and see when the event does actually end so that people can get off christmas shipment and can stop worrying about krampus in their games of caldera or even regular multiplayer but on a bit of a better note though we do have a tweet from the legend playstation size who found the new update that was added to the database for call of duty vanguard he's claiming it is a small update and keep in mind when he puts full game size that's not referring to the size of the actual patch for this update that's just going to be the size of the game after the update comes out and apparently this update isn't really a big one but as we saw in the past with modern warfare even black ops cold war whenever this legend reports on a new update being added to the database it's usually a good week away from the preload so i think a week from today we should be seeing a preload for wherever this update is if this is the mid-season update we're all waiting for but vanguard has been a bit inconsistent where he'll report on an update in the database and then all of a sudden it ends up being downloaded like a day or two after he tweets this so we're not sure when this update does officially release but don't forget season one's update was i believe less than 10 gigabytes or right around that number so season one reloaded probably won't be any bigger than that it'll actually be a lot smaller probably three gigs or so if i had to take a guess so it's unclear how big the update's gonna be but i think that does solidify this it, people shouldn't be too excited about season one reloaded so it probably won't end up adding in anything too crazy now looking at what's left from the original season one roadmap
map for Vanguard here. It's really just, what, the well gun down there, we have Isabella as an operator, and then some other minor zombies content like the Toma Rituals, which allows you to enhance your field upgrades, Von List's office, a new location you can go to, I'm not sure how important that'll be, killstreak support, and even more, and of course more bundles are going to be on the way for the remainder of Season 1. We talked about those in depth in a previous video that I have linked down below in the description, but like every other reloaded roadmap we got for Modern Warfare and Black Ops Cold War, there should still be some surprises in store that we don't know much about in terms of official marketing. First off, we do know there is definitely one more multiplayer map on deck for Season 1. It was mentioned in a previous blog post that three multiplayer maps will be added throughout Season 1, and so far we only have two, Paradise and Radar, and since one of these maps is already a reimagining, right, the remake of Dome from Modern Warfare 3, I wouldn't expect the third map that's going to be releasing to be another remake. It should be a new and original map for Vanguard multiplayer, but at the same time too, based on how development has gone for this game, and based on how the post-launch support has been for Vanguard, I wouldn't really expect much, so I almost wouldn't be shocked if it was another remake. But with that being said, there is a list of upcoming multiplayer maps that we addressed in a previous video in more depth, and in terms of what that list is, we have this confirmed from other gaming scoopers out there, so I've compiled it. We have USS Texas, a map from World War II, a map called Casablanca, so I guess the White House? Not sure how that'll work. Alps, which I believe is a map set in a snowy environment. Bastion, or Bastion, not sure what that is. Tank B, Factory, and then London Docks, another map there from World War II. So any one of these could be the bonus map that we end up getting in Season 1 Reloaded. And again, if it is one of the reimaginings from World War II 2017, I also wouldn't be shocked, but I figured they would save that as a bit of a bang for the opening of Season 2, which is less than a month from now. Now, in terms of weapons, I want to say the well gun is probably the last one for Season 1, but you know what? There's still a possibility that they add maybe another weapon or two as a bit of a bonus, and as of right now, unreleased weapons include four LMGs, three SMGs, one shotgun, four ARs, two snipers, four melee weapons, and one potential special weapon like a flamethrower, and more information about that is linked down below in terms of the specifics of what those weapons are. I went over those specifics in a previous video that again is down below, but that's a lot of weapons still on deck, and like we saw with Cold War, content could be finished a good six months before release. That just happens when it comes to COD development. They'll have something done by Season 1 that doesn't end up coming out until late Season 5. That's just the way it goes behind the scenes. Now to touch back on zombies a little bit, I would say besides what is confirmed from the original roadmap, I don't think anything else is really coming this season, but I would love to be proven wrong, right? It just blows my mind that we'll end up going potentially three months without a main quest, without a wonder weapon, or very much besides little updates that should have been in the game day one, right? Everything being added to Duran Fung right now is content that would have made launch so much better for zombies fans out there, and the word on the street right now, as you guys may have already heard, is that there probably will not be a round base map at all in Vanguard Zombies, which I'm not surprised about at all. I don't really think it even makes sense to add one at all, since people are just going to be upset that it'll still end up being less round base maps at the end of the day than what Cold War had by the end of that game's life cycle. I don't picture them releasing, you know, five to six full-fledged round base maps in this game, especially with the fact that we're already, what, three months into this life cycle, or just about, so they don't have much time to add too many Zombies maps to this game, and Vanguard of all Call of Duty titles definitely will not be getting a year or two, I can promise you that one. At this point, you might as well just accept that Vanguard is exactly like Modern Warfare in the sense that the third mode, which was Spec Ops back then, but Zombies now, won't be getting much love or support, and it's just there. It's just something extra you can play, whereas the main focus is really on Warzone, and then I would say multiplayer in a good second place. But other than that, the third game mode for both MW2019 and Vanguard are likely not going to get much love. They're probably going to be equal by the end of the year. But obviously everybody knows about the supposed Jingle Hells game mode that was supposed to be released in Duran Fung, along with Festive Wonder Weapon drops. There were some audio quotes about it. That's probably canceled. Christmas is already over, so maybe they'll just repurpose whatever those Wonder Weapon drops were in a future update. The Ray Gun will very likely be added, but even when it does in the next couple of weeks or months, it'll still be silly to think that it took that long to get something so basic, which is a Ray Gun. Now I want to squeeze this segment into the video as well, in case you guys haven't seen my previous content where I touched on this a little bit, I'm not trying to be bitter about Vanguard, and I definitely don't want all my Vanguard videos to just be 10-15 minute rants about what they're doing wrong with the game. There just isn't much that's right that's being done about the game at the moment, so I just haven't made much content about it, right? There also hasn't been much added to the game or anything interesting to really talk about, so I'm like, alright, while well, devs went on vacation, I guess so did I when it comes to Vanguard coverage, so I stepped away for a bit, started talking about older CODs, Black Ops Cold War again, whatever's left with that, and then new rumors about COD 2023, I haven't really 
really happy with the content I've produced. Hopefully, you guys have enjoyed it. The support has been unreal lately, so it really means a lot that you guys stuck around even when Vanguard is at an all-time low. So we're going to keep going with, you know, whatever the COD cycle brings us, of course, kind of riding this wave out and seeing what happens with the remainder of this game's life cycle. But I really don't see people being happy with this game until at least Season 2. And that's saying a lot, too, because you shouldn't have to wait, you know, four plus, maybe even five months for the game to be stable, for the game to be replayable. We shouldn't have to wait for that, but I don't see people being really happy with the remainder of Season 1, and I hope to be proven wrong, right? Hopefully this upcoming update they have planned really overhauls what is wrong with the game and adds in a bit of content that kind of sharpens up wherever the game is falling flat with uh, zombies, with a bit of the multiplayer, and then of course with Caldera that's in desperate need of some serious change. That is absolutely a broken experience right now. now I put out a funny tweet earlier which does say that everybody's really waiting for info on Season 1 Reloaded or what's next for Vanguard since the game desperately needs updates, but then all of a sudden we have Charlie Intel that comes out with a new rumor, which I guess was kind of talking a bit about what Tom Henderson had put out regarding MW2 coming out less than a year from now. That game's supposedly going to contain a bunch of classic content from the original Modern Warfare 2 from 10 years ago when it comes to maps, weapons. We have maps like Favela, High Rise, Terminal, and even Quarry all rumored for that game, which is a bit ironic considering with Modern Warfare 2019 a couple of years ago, that game was rumored to have quite a bit of content from MW2 that never saw a light of day. So I guess it made sense to save that for their MW sequels. So that when the game does come out less than a year from now, it starts off with a bunch of content and is ready to go right off the bat at launch with maybe even more content than Vanguard had at release. But like I said before, you know, quantity over quality doesn't ever work. I don't care if a game has 60 multiplayer maps. If the game is damaged at its core, isn't fun, and isn't really well balanced, then the amount of maps doesn't really affect anything, right? If the game is fun at its core and there's, you know, 8 to 10 quality MP maps at launch, then I'll take that. But again, that's a bit of a hot take because... People weren't really on board with how Cold War only had, I believe it was, eight multiplayer maps at launch. And you know what? I didn't like all of them equally, right? They weren't perfect maps, but if a game comes out and only has eight to ten MP maps for 6v6, but they're all solid, really replayable, and just iconic right off the bat, then I'll take that. I don't mind it, right? Quality over quantity for me, but let's see what happens in the future. But that is about it. This has been DK Dynamite. Leave all your thoughts down below in the comment section. What are your thoughts on what to expect for Season 1 Reloaded of Vanguard? Is it enough, or is it another underwhelming update that you're not really surprised about? I really hope you've enjoyed, and peace out, everybody.